Good morning, good morning, good morning. In this video, we are going to talk about the Roth IRA. What exactly is the Roth IRA and why I wish someone pushed me and jumped on me like I'm trying to get on all of y'all youngins. And if you are, you know, if you're around my age, if you're in your 30s or if you're older, you still should consider opening a Roth IRA. Maybe a traditional IRA might be more ideal for a lot of you um, who are older than me, especially. But generally speaking, uh, Roth IRA is probably going to make most sense for pretty much most of you guys watching this video. But like I said, I want to dive into not only, you know, I'm going to, we're not going to actually look at my full on portfolio, my Roth IRA, but I'm going to show you, hey, it's doing pretty well. There have been times it's kind of just been stagnant. It's plateaued for a while. It's gone down a little bit. But as a whole, I'm doing pretty good with my Roth IRA. I have it inside of M1 Finance, which, like I said, I'll show you that. I'm not going to show you what's in it. I'm not going to show you how much is in it right now, but I will show you the percentage. And I will show you one of the major features that I love with M1 Finance and why I suggest and recommend it to pretty much all of you guys out there watching this who want to start a Roth IRA, who want to start thinking about your, your future retirement planning. It's incredibly important. I don't care if you think you're going to blow up and make it big. That's cool. But you should still be in a position where you're planning for your retirement. And the sooner you start, the better off you're going to be. I wish someone got on my beep about that when I was in my 20s or even earlier, because as you guys are going to see, this uh, diagram shows you what um, you know, what kind of a difference it makes with getting in um, earlier with an IRA. The sooner you start, the better off you're going to be. I mean, you might think, oh, well, you know, 30 years to 35 or 25 to 35 doesn't make a big difference. It makes a huge difference. I'm trying to tell you guys. I keep trying to tell my nephew doesn't want to listen to me or he's just, you know, he's he's like me when I was younger where I was reluctant to believe and listen to everyone who, you know, and, and of course it's hard to listen to everyone. You don't want to listen to everyone, but to listen to people that care about me and that new little thing or two that I didn't know. Again, now the challenge is sometimes people who care about you don't necessarily know what is actually best for you. And, you know, maybe my nephew's right. Maybe he has the right plan and, you know, what he's envisioning on how he's going to get there, the grind he's dealing with right now and the struggle he's going through. Maybe this is actually part of the plan, right? I mean, usually a struggle and whatnot is part of a journey, but I like to believe, hey, if I can make my struggle easier, I would prefer to go that route, so to speak. If I can be still just as prepared and equipped to succeed and, and take on any other obstacles I'm going to deal with in the future, that's fine with me. You know, I'd much rather do it with less of a struggle and still be able to handle anything that's going to be thrown at me in the future. But in any case, what you guys see right now over here is this diagram. Let me make this bigger. Let's see if we can make that bigger. Um, we're going to visit Fidelity's website and uh, turbocharge your child's retirement with the Roth IRA for kids. We're not even going to dive into that. I just really want to show you this diagram, this image. And like I said, you might be like, well, what exactly is a Roth IRA? I don't really get it. Like, how does it work? We're going to dive into that in a moment. But this diagram helps to show you if someone started a Roth IRA at the age of 15 with $3,000, right? Um, and it says down here, annual Roth contributions of $3,000 for ages 15 to 20. And then annual contributions of $6,000 for ages 21 and over. So 16, uh, 15 up to 20, you're going to get just $3,000 um, a year. And then after 20 to, you know, 20 to 25, it's going to go up to 6,000. And then every other year, it's going to go to 6,000. And by doing that, that alone, by the age of 25, the kid who's 15 will now have almost $70,000 saved up compared to the person who's 25, who's just starting. And if they put the maximum amount they're allowed to add to their Roth IRA, they would just be at six thousand dollars. They would still be. They would be way behind the fifteen year year old kid. Um, meanwhile, the person who's thirty five hasn't even started yet at that point, so they don't have anything. By the time you know we get up to the age of thirty five, when the when that you know young adult decides to actually 
contribute to their Roth IRA, which is completely fine. I wish, like I said, <laughs> I wish I started earlier. I'm not going to say when I started. Um, I'm definitely going to have that blurred out in my Roth IRA uh, fund, but I did not start nowhere near as soon as I should. And you know what? There's no need to keep it all. You know, I basically, this is pretty much me right here. This is pretty much me, literally. So if you are in your 20s and you just start to contribute anything you can on a monthly basis at up to $6,000 a year, you're going to be ahead of me by the time you get to you know, 45 or, or even once you get to 35, you're, you're going to have a huge, huge, huge head start on anyone who's older than you who hasn't started or is just starting. And this is the power of compound interest, the, the power of, you know, just actually getting your, your small contributions to add up over the long term. And it's really this, this, I'm trying to touch on it, the, the mentality of thinking about it like a marathon and not a sprint. I used to be a sprinter. So I know how hard it is to want to just go out the gate flying, to want to just get after it. But you got to pace yourself. I'm telling you guys, um, the sooner you start, though, the better off you are going to be by the time we get up to, you know, time to retire. We get up to the, you know, 65. If that 15 year old, if your son, your kid or even you and you went to your parents and you said, hey, I want to start my retirement fund. I want to start my Roth IRA. You're going to have over two million dollars in your account. The kid who's the, you know, the young adult who's 25, they're going to have over a million, almost one point five. And this is all with a seven percent annual rate of return um, average. Um, the, the, the young adult who's 35, they're going to have, uh, you know, almost seven hundred thousand dollars. And then the adult who's 45, who uh, is just starting off, is going to have uh, over three hundred thousand dollars saved up by the time they're 65. So, hey, anything is better than nothing for one. But two, clearly there is a major difference that you can see from, you know, the, the, the youngin who starts earlier compared to the adult who starts later. Now, again, let's rewind this and talk about exactly what is a Roth IRA. As you can see here, we're on Investopedia. A Roth IRA is an individual retirement account that allows qualified withdrawals on a tax-free basis provided certain conditions are satisfied and uh, interesting i didn't know that but it was established in 1997 it was named after william roth a former delaware senator i didn't know that and I, i'm surprised it's this it's only it was only made in 1997 um very interesting there but a roth ira um Roth IRAs are similar to traditional IRAs with the biggest distinction between the two being how they are taxed. A Roth IRAs um, are funded with after-tax dollars. The contributions are not tax deductible. But once you start withdrawing funds, the money is tax-free. Conversely, a traditional IRA deposits are generally made with pre-tax dollars. You usually get a tax deduction on your contribution and pay income tax when you withdraw the money from your account during retirement. So again, um, those are pretty much among the major biggest key differences. Um, and as you can see, the key takeaways of Roth IRA is a special retirement account where you pay taxes on the money going into your account. And then all future withdrawals are tax free. OK, so you, you're paying taxes on that money right now with the Roth IRA. So anything that it does when it's inside of that account and you have it in your Roth IRA account and it's starting to, you know, it's money going behind Tesla or whomever else. And that takes off. You don't pay taxes on any of that money when 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 you're taking it out, when you when you uh, are withdrawing um, at retirement. Now, of course, th there are stipulations that we're going to dive into. Um, as you can see, it says a Roth IRA are best when you think your taxes will be higher in retirement than they are right now. So if you think your taxes are going to be higher down the road in the future than what they are right now, you're probably going to want a Roth IRA. You can't you cannot contribute to a Roth IRA if you make too much money. In 2021, the limit for singles is $140,000. In um, uh, 2022, the limit is $144,000. And for married couples, the limit is $208,000. In 2022, the limit rises to $114,000, uh, which I think that means 214000 
Um, and it says down here, the amount you can contribute uh, changes periodically in 2021 and 2022. The contribution limit is $6,000 a year, unless you are age 50 or older, in which case you can deposit up to $7,000. And almost all brokerage firms, both physical and online, offer a Roth IRA. So, you know, I'll have a link to this um, article right here so you guys can dive in here if you want to learn a bit more about a uh, Roth IRA. But like I said, ultimately, $6,000 is what you are allowed to contribute to your Roth IRA. Now, like I said, there are some stipulations, there are some rules, but we'll, we'll dive into some of those components, some of those rules and whatnot um, behind a uh, Roth IRA just to help you guys with just getting a little bit of a better understanding, but essentially pretty much any money you put into it, you're pretty much allowed to take it out without being penalized. And then even earnings, there are situations and times and ways you can go about taking that money out without being penalized. Um, but again, we'll dive into this in a moment. What I want to show you guys and dive into now is my actual Roth IRA. And um, like I said, uh, this is being, you know, my personal real, um, one of my real personal portfolios. Um, not going to show you how much is actually in here right now. I'm not going to show you guys, um, what, what, you know, uh, what's in this account, this portfolio. It's not, I will say it's all ETFs. So as much as my channel focuses on my dividend portfolio, my growth portfolio, I'll focus on single individual, you know, stocks and companies. Um, my Roth IRA is actually only full of ETFs. Um, and I took that approach because I want a diversified, safe, um, you know, re rewarding, but yet uh, uh, reliable portfolio to work for me. I wanted something that's going to produce dividends, but at the same time still have potential for growth, right? So I'm kind of hitting a combination of different worlds with my Roth IRA. And, um, you know, things are going really well right now. There have been times where, like I said, it'll just be stagnant. Maybe it'll take a little bit of a dip. Haven't had a major dip with this portfolio yet because it's not that long. It's not that old. Um, I think I started this portfolio back in 2019. Unfortunately, I wish I contributed the full $6,000 that you are allowed to in my first year. I did not. So that right there kind of gives you guys a ball frame, a ballpark estimate of how much is in here. Um, you can do the math if you really wanted to figure it out, you know, knowing how much I can contribute each year, how much I potentially did that first year, um, and then knowing what percentage we're up. Uh, so I have no complaints. I'm, I'm satisfied with where it's at knowing when I started it. My biggest regret is I wish I started it earlier. I wish someone pushed me and said, hey, start a Roth IRA. You're, you're, you're a little entrepreneur. You like to grind and hustle and do your own thing. Or sometimes you have your job. And yeah, they might have a 401k, but you're not always going to have that job. You're always going to be a little, a little businessman, a little entrepreneur, someone who grinds, works your butt off. Well, that's where the Roth IRA is so key for, for individuals like that. And there are other, you know, um, individual retirement accounts that might make more sense than a Roth IRA. But I think this is the best starting point for anyone who's, you know, part of the gig economy. If you're a sole proprietor, a freelancer, an independent contractor, or even a business owner, um, you know, and you want to just start with thinking about retirement planning and thinking about the future. Um, this is, I think, this is this is the the missing ingredient that so many people uh, are missing out on, just don't know about it or haven't had someone just stressing and trying to drive it down their throat and saying, hey, you know, I keep trying to tell my nephew. I ask him, how you start your Roth IRA yet? He's like, no, no uncle. And he knows he should have and he knows he's messing up by not doing it. I don't know why he still hasn't done it yet. I haven't really given him much of a hard time recently, so that might be part of it. Um, no one else is giving him a hard time, so... You know, sometimes it's that team effort where maybe I need someone else. I got to say something to his mother. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're currently dealing with the situation now where you know the importance of having a retirement fund and so on and so on. Had you started earlier, you would have so much more money and this, that, and the other. And, you know, so I don't know. I, I got to, I got to, I got to get on him, but I'm trying to get on all of you guys out there watching this. If you got a sibling, if you got a nephew, if you got a relative, if you got a colleague 
who hasn't started that retirement planning, you can start with $100, deposit $50 a month, $100 a month, something, anything is better than nothing. You guys saw that chart with uh, uh, on Fidelity's website, the kid who was 15, the one who was 25, were so much better off than the adults who were 35 and 45. Um, by the time they got 65 with their Roth IRAs because of that consistency and because of the power of compound interest and also because of uh, features like this auto invest feature that M1 Finance has. So this cash balance is actually money from our from my um, earned dividends. So I don't contribute. I, I already added my maximum um, annual a contribution to my Roth IRA. I can't add any more money in here and I haven't. But, um, you know, uh, the earned dividends is a couple hundred dollars. I won't show you, like I said, it's all personal, so no need to get into details. But um, the, the beauty of a Roth IRA and having dividends, especially because you guys know I got my growth, my, uh, my dividend portfolio. And I love, I love that portfolio, but with the Roth IRA, especially because you can only add your annual contribution. Once you hit that, you can't add anything else, but you do have that ability and the power of using features that um, some of these brokers have like M1 Finance, which I'll have a link to it down below in the description area if you wanna start using them to you know, build up your retirement fund or even just you know investing in general. Um, but they give you this auto invest um, ability where once you reach $25 or over, this uh, money will be reinvested into your portfolio automatically for you. So we're at $21.20 pretty much once, you know, every, uh, I think some of my, um, some of my ETFs might have some uh, monthly payouts, but I think they're all mainly quarterly. Um, so once the next flow of money comes, uh, that's going to either push it right to it because I think most of my kind of earned dividends with this portfolio, since we're, you know, over much more than my, my dividend portfolio, this actually gives you, you know, some some bucks when it comes to your dividend payout. So that might push us to the twenty five dollars or over twenty five dollars, which then that money will then be reinvested into our portfolio for us automatically, helping us to continue to grow. And that's the power of your Roth IRA and a retirement fund, um, especially working with a company or a broker like M1 Finance, reinvesting your money, getting it to keep working for you, growing your money, right? Because once you have a regular stock and it's only the growth part, if, if, it, if it doesn't, the stock doesn't actually go up, which our stock side of thing, the market gain is doing really well here too. Um, but if they don't go up, then you are only relying on dividends. But having a scenario where you can get both is a, is is like best of both worlds. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so, like I said, we're gonna dive into the withdrawal rules. But remember, the sooner you can start, the better off you're gonna be. I wish someone pushed me and got me to start, not day trading, not swing trading, investing. And I gotta make a video talking about the difference because I, I hear people saying them like interchangeable. I feel like there's a difference. Um, me personally, I do both, but I'm much better. I make much more sound decisions when it comes to my uh, investment strategy than my trading strategy, to be completely honest. Um, but as you guys can see, the person who's starting off earlier generally is going to be much, much better than those older individuals. So if you're watching this, if you're in your 20s, please start a Roth IRA or start some kind of retirement fund. And I know, yeah, you might blow up. You might make it big next year, two years from now, five years from now, TikTok, the, now, the next big TikTok thing, uh, whatever, uh, meta universe is new, whatever, <laughs> some NFTs. In any of those scenarios, you're still going to want to be thinking about the future and you still want to be planning, having that retirement planning um, in place regardless of your financial status if you're if you if you're blowing up you got money out the you know cool dope but you still got to think about these things and you still got to start it and so regardless the sooner you start the better off you're going to be i'm telling you guys and maybe it's not a roth ira that's best for you maybe you want a traditional ira maybe you want a sep i mean there are a number of different options and different routes to go but generally speaking a roth ira is going to make the most sense for most of you guys watching this 
Um, that said, I do want to dive into a little bit of the uh, Roth IRA withdrawal rules and how to avoid taxes and penalties. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, I do think it's important that you guys kind of know a little bit of the, the general gist when it comes to a Roth IRA, aside from being able to you know contribute twenty uh, six thousand dollars a year, and some of the key takeaways that you're going to see here is that uh, withdrawal rules for Roth IRAs are more flexible than those of traditional IRAs and 401ks. So that's one of the major reasons people like a Roth IRA. Account holders can always withdraw the money they contribute without incurring taxes or penalties. So the money you add to your Roth IRA, you can take it out without getting taxes or penalties. People over 59 and a half who've held their accounts for at least five years old can withdraw contributions and earnings with no tax or penalties. Again, you can withdraw your contributions and earnings with no tax penalty um, if you've had your account for at least five years and you're over 59 and a half. Um, special exceptions apply for those who are under 59 and a half and don't meet the five-year rule if uh, make withdrawals for a first-time home purchase, college expenses, and a few other situations. So again, there are special exceptions where you can withdraw that money, your earnings and whatnot, um, uh, for a first-time home purchase, college expenses, and other situations, and there are no required minimum distributions for a Roth IRA during your lifetime. Other uh, IRAs have it where once you get a certain age, you have to start to, you know, uh, withdraw, distribute um, money. Uh, that is not the case with the Roth IRA. So, you know, that right there is pretty much the gist. But as you see down here, it says Roth IRA withdrawal rules differ depending on whether you take out contributions or your investment income. Contributions are the money you deposit into an IRA while earnings are your profits. And, and regardless, though, with a Roth IRA, both of those grow tax free in your account. So again, the benefit of a Roth IRA is when it's time to withdraw that money, all of the gains that it's that it's made, it's tax free. So it's already been taxed when you first went to deposit your money into that account. You had to report it and it was being taxed at that time. Um, so when it's time to get that money out uh, at retirement, all of the gains that it's made, it's gone up on its own. It's all tax free. You don't have to pay taxes on that. And then it says you can withdraw your Roth IRA contributions at any time for any reason with no tax or penalties. Again, this is your Roth IRA contributions. That's because you make contributions with after tax dollars. So you've already paid income taxes on that money. And then withdrawals on the earnings in the account work differently. These distributions may be subject to income taxes and a 10% penalty depending on your age and how long you've had the account. The annual contribution limit to both the traditional um, and a Roth IRA is $6,000 for 2021 and 2022. And individuals age 50 and over can deposit a catch-up contribution in the amount of $1,000. Now, there are um, income limits. So the annual amount you can contribute uh, contribute to a Roth IRA is limited and can be phased out depending on how much money, how much income you earn. So for 2021 tax year, the income phase out range for, for singles is $125,000 up to $140,000. And then for 2022 contributions, the income phase out range has uh, been increased to $129,000 to $144,000. In other words, contributions cannot be made to a Roth IRA if your income exceeded $140,000 in 2021 or $144,000 in 2022. Married couples who file a joint tax return, the income uh, phase out range in 2021 is $198,000 to $208,000 and $204,000 to $214,000 in 2022. And lastly, there is the uh, 
Roth IRA five-year rule in general, you can withdraw your earnings without owing taxes or penalties if you've uh, if you're at least 59 years old and you've been at least five years since you first uh, contributed to a Roth IRA, the five-year rule. Um, and that really is just regardless of uh, your age when you opened up your account. If you're 58 years old, when you make your first contribution, for example, you have to wait until age 63 to avoid taxes. Um, and, you know, this goes on. There's a few other more in helpful and vital information in here that you guys can consider um, diving into this. Remember, this first time home, bu home buyer exception. Um, there are several IRS exceptions that let you take money out of your Roth IRA without paying a penalty. One of the key ones is for first time home buyers. Interestingly, you may still qualify for a first time home buyer, even if you've owned a home in the past. Then they got the higher education expenses. Um, and I mean, I think there's a few others as well. But um, ultimately, as you see down here, you can take a withdrawal, but should you? The pros, you can always withdraw contributions, tax and penalty free. You can withdraw earnings under some special circumstances that we just spoke about, and you can avoid paying interest on a loan. However, the cons, withdrawing earnings incurs penalties and taxes if you haven't had the account for five years or um, or are under 59 and a half. You can't repay the money and you miss out on future tax free growth. Um, but you guys don't want to be pulling money out of this. You don't want to think about this like, like you don't want to think about this money. You want to get paid, have it, you know, go into it on a monthly basis. Or if you can do it one time at the beginning of the year, get it done with and don't even look at it. Don't think about it. Just let it do its thing. Right. That's the beauty. That's the power of a uh, uh, Roth IRA, getting it to work for you, getting that that money to to grow tax free and then that my friends is what will help you uh getting your money to to start to really climb up there breaking over a hundred thousand eventually over two hundred thousand over you know five hundred thousand and we get to that million mark depending on your situation depending on when you start again and depending on how well your portfolio does because this is with a seven percent annual rate of return my portfolio as you guys just saw is doing much much better right now does that mean it will It'll probably average out, though, maybe around 7 percent, maybe 10 percent. Right. Because when 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 we have a bad year, bad market, that's going to go down quite a bit. Right. So when it's all evened out, hopefully we're going to be above that 7 percent. And hopefully we're going to be above. <laughs> I mean, my, my hope is I'll definitely be, you know, above this area over here, wherever, you know, when I stop um, adding to it, because like I said, I didn't start as early as I wish I did. And. <sighs> Yeah, I just wish someone got on me like I'm trying to get on all y'all youngins. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful, motivational, encouraging. If you are just starting, don't worry. You're starting. That's dope. You know, even if you're 45 and you're just starting. Hats off to you, my man or, or ma'am, uh, sir, who, whomever. Uh, just start. And once you start, hit that, get that as much as you can do every month every year up to that 6,000, you know, limit, assuming you're under, what is it? 50 or whatever. Yeah. Under 50. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just keep, keep at it every year. Keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Compound interest, get that money to be reinvest, get your dividends to stay in there. Don't take that money out. Don't take it out. You might be tempted. Um, no, get it to work for you because that's how it's going to really grow. And that's how you're really going to have, you know, you're going to reach that 1 million, 1.5 million, or, you know, yeah, maybe it's only six, uh, 685,000 or only 300,000. All of that is better off is more than the person who is only and solely relying on, you know, social security or some other government program that's being attacked all the, you know, always being attacked and potentially is at, you know, uh, risk of not even being around in years to come, you know, you want to make sure you have something in place to support you and, you know, yourself and, and your loved ones, your family, you know, so I think this is a great starting point. Um, there, of course, are other uh, individual retirement accounts you can consider. This is not legal or financial advice, obviously, just trying to encourage you guys to start doing something I wish someone got on me to start doing sooner. You know, so that's simple. 
open up, click the link down below to M1 Finance. I think if you use my link, open and fund your account, they give you some free money. Um, you got to just start off with $100. Bam, you already get in a little free money right there that's going to go right towards your retirement. Not a bad deal, my friends. Click that link. Get started. What are you waiting on? I don't know what else I got to say. You guys are seeing the numbers right here. The sooner you start, the better off you're going to be. You know, I can work my butt off as hard as I can. And I'm, you know, the, whoever's watching this, if you're in your 20s and you add that most, you know, the most amount, and if your returns are the same as mine or, you know, even potentially a little worse, I'm still not going to be uh, better off than what you will be at 65 or 70. Is it is what it is, right? Nothing I can do in that sense. Well, the only other thing I can do is consider having other investment uh, uh, portfolios, right? Because with your Roth IRA, you can only add six thousand dollars a year. The, the The downfall to any other investment um, portfolios is that those will be taxed at whatever you know, wherever my income rate is and whatnot. Um. So you don't have the benefits that you have from a Roth IRA. And this is why I'm trying to stress the sooner you can start it off, the better you're going to be. And um, yeah, just get going, my friends, get started. If I was in my 20s, this is this is probably one of the most important things I, I kind of regret. And I wish, um, you know, I would go back and kind of get the get the ball rolling on. So I said it before. I'll say it again. If you got any siblings, if you have any relatives, if you have any colleagues, you know, maybe it's the, the young and who, who you work with. Let them know. Like, hey, let me let me put them onto my channel. Send them this video and be like, you, you got you to gotta get started with a Roth IRA. Get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling. Because it's all about, you know, the marathon and not a sprint. And I know we all want to attain financial freedom, but it's all about that financial independence journey. And this is part of my journey. And I hope you guys can get started with yours sooner than later as well to help you with attaining financial freedom. And on that note, you guys already know, I got to keep it moving. Much appreciation for watching. If you haven't yet liked this video, it does show me you guys appreciate and enjoy this type of video content. And, uh, you know, like I said, I appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you want to stay up to date on all of my latest videos. I try to make a video every single day. Budgeting, financial literacy, uh, credit cards, credit building, entrepreneurial videos, but mainly financial literacy content though. And if you are a sole proprietor, self-employed, independent contractor, freelancer, or business owner, this channel is definitely for you. And look out for my new channel, MASH, Marketing and Sales Help. But on that note, my friends, you already know I got to keep it moving. But I'll see you in the next video. Peace.